recorded and may be used as evidence. Call connected. And in the end, ultimately, something that could have saved him wasn't allowed. Mm. See, this is Alex, and although you can see he's flu-like, like his eyes look like he's got the flu. That was th three days before his seizure. Could never have predicted that. I just got completely and utterly overwhelmed and sort of Jess and the whole family because it, it just was unrelenting. And they just go on and on. They don't stop really. It sort of became my campaign but it was as much Jess's campaign. I think all oh, that one and that the clear fold are all the front pages. Oh. Alex's case highlighted we have no freedom to choose. If cannabis is medicine, then we know that it is, back through history, for thousands of years, far longer than the pharmaceuticals. Others get the right to choose, and we have no right to choose because our medicine is cannabis. And the laws, uh, the politicians, are, they don't support it. How can the doctors support it? Are they terrified of cannabis? Or are they terrified of the law? They're terrified of the law. Mr. President, Excellencies, Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. So you frame the certificate of Peter Dunn's approval for Alex to use CBD oil and, and that's because it's, a, it's actually an historic document that, you, that you've got there. It's the first time in New Zealand history that anyone's ever been granted that exemption by the Ministry of Health. Yeah, I think and lots of, I framed it because of it is a point in history but also how insanely ridiculous it is that that's what we had to get to choose a treatment 
and it took weeks of struggle weeks and in the end they had to because nothing else worked that's wrong and Peter Dunn's comment was it doesn't set a precedent it does because why should any other family have to go through what we went through to get something which should be a human right every night that man goes to sleep I don't know how he can sleep in his bed when he could change these laws. To me he's a murderer because he is withholding medicine from people. I find it disgusting. I framed it because Alex would be proud that he may have made a difference in cannabis history in New Zealand. But as for Peter Dunn, He's not doing his job. I find it really frustrating that we've got somebody making decisions who has got limited knowledge, he's been given access to a lot of information but he apparently doesn't read it, and he doesn't seem to want to do the job. I say if you're in the seat, do the job or get out of the seat and let somebody else do it. Alex Renton was the first one who had legal access to CBD oil here in New Zealand. Cannabis is known to be useful in these seizure cases where no other medicine can actually be effective. To be denied this medicine, uh, my heart just ached for her and I, I'm so happy that she stood up and was brave enough to take a stand on this issue and that now she wants to work to help other people have access to a medicine that has been used for centuries. I was driving home from Nelson and I saw a plane come over my property, circle three or four times, and then head back. And my poor old mom, who had dementia, when she knew the police were here, because she knew that um, Buzz was medicating with cannabis, she became terrified that I was going to be taken away to uh, jail. She said over and over again, who's going to look after me? And then, of course, my husband. He felt incredibly guilty that I should be dragged through the courts and publicly exposed as some kind of criminal just because I was growing medicine for him. When our, all of our cannabis was taken away, the very next day I went and got him some more because I didn't want to watch him suffer. To be called a serious criminal offender when actually I was caregiving for my mother with dementia and my husband who was disabled and just being a harmless gardener, it was a very stressful experience for my whole family. The police turn up at their home and search through all their personal possessions and take away their medicine. It's a huge impact on people's rights and their sense of safety in their home. There are some terrible examples of the impact that police actions have on individuals who are otherwise law-abiding good citizens and who have simply chosen to use a natural product that gives them significant health benefits. To treat those people as criminals, to raid their homes, to go through all their personal things, to put them through the court process, is extremely difficult for people. And it, it leads people to a distrust of the law and a distrust of the police. I had to fight to get the magnesium, which is a trace element, um, phenobarbitone, the anti-seizures, thiopentone, there's two lots of chemotherapy in there, there's tempiramate, there's leucosamide, these are all chemical drugs. So they just completely fill a body up, morphine, at huge levels. And you would have chosen the CBD oil as Immediately. The... But of course, in New Zealand, where do you get it? Had he had access to this medicinal drug weeks earlier than he was allowed to have, that it, it, it's quite likely, according to evidence of other cases, that it would have had a positive effect. And who knows, it could have saved his life. I've lost Alex. Nothing the authorities do or say can change that, but they can actually. They can change it so no other family
goes through what we did. It's not right. No one should have to go through what we went through. No one. Least of all Alex. Because he was gentle and kind and believed in justice and equality and a freedom to choose if anything. If there was one statement that described Alex, it, was, it would be, give me my freedom to choose. And that's why I've talked to people about it. I would never want what happened to us to happen to anyone, whether I knew them or not, whether I was related to them or not. You shouldn't have to watch videos of children in seizures or cancer patients dying to care. Just know they're there every day suffering. And Alex is passing. I have to see it as a gift of education because that's all I have left. But some people would be horrified that it was exposed to New Zealand media. Well, what happened was horrific to him and it shouldn't have happened because of laws. Nothing to do with humanity, nothing to do with medicine, just laws that prevent healing. The melanoma is the softest, smoothest, most healthiest piece of skin and has been for six months or more on my whole body. Raw cannabis oil is the only thing that's done anything to this melanoma. I've got no respect for the law, the laws make to control people, you know, if we were taught how to behave properly and, and re respect ourselves and the world properly, we wouldn't need the law as we've got it and we wouldn't need people with guns in prisons telling us what to do with threats of punishment, so uh, I've got no respect for the law. Um, uh, how do I feel about, say for instance, going public about my having broken the law and fixed myself but was still breaking the law. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Watch visibly over a period of weeks, watch with your own eyes something dissolving off your skin and turning into normal skin is confirmation, <laughs> huge powerful confirmation. This is one issue where they can directly affect the lives of so many New Zealand citizens. And all they have to do is change the regulations to let doctors prescribe medicine to their patients without bureaucrats interfering. The product works for them, it helps manage their pain, it helps manage their arthritis, it helps manage their multiple sclerosis. Of course the same product's going to work for them back in New Zealand. They don't need more research of that. Rebecca arriving in New Zealand was the first time we had somebody importing and using raw cannabis legally in New Zealand. I've done a lot of different things in this struggle since my court case because once my name was out there and I was not afraid to speak out anymore, I realized I had to keep speaking out because most <laughs> patients are afraid to because they're doing something that's illegal. I'm eye on victory. So yeah, this is um, all grown by a friend of mine. This one is indica, awesome for pain relief. Sometimes history doesn't really, there's no one standing here jumping up and down saying, this person is sitting here in the middle of the airport with the first legal marijuana buds in New Zealand since prohibition started, what, 60 years ago? That's why this is important to me. It's showing all these intransigent politicians who are refusing to listen to public opinion. Wake up, the sky's not falling in. I'm in less pain. And there are so many people who can be helped by cannabis. And there are so many people who have been going to prison for what I consider no reason. So here's me punching a hole in the big lie saying that makes no sense and that's, you know, this, this is the future. And the politicians may resist for a while, but they'll get over it eventually. We just have to keep bothering them. <laughs> I'm still sort of stunned. That was the least expected outcome. I had envisioned various scenarios, but the two-second whisk through was not what I envisioned at all. <laughs> Especially when I've been in the position of having the cops invade my house for three hours and tell me I'm going to go to jail for ten years and all this bullshit. <laughs> it's like, it's sort of like, what? 
and then just walk through just like that it, there's a bit of multiple realities existing at the same time she can now educate people the media were excited because they could actually talk to someone about how it worked and she wasn't facing the police coming and arresting her oh that's cute you look gorgeous one two three I say listen to the people, let people choose what medicine they want for their bodies. If they need advice, let them get advice from their doctors. But there's no role for bureaucrats to tell people or their doctors what medicines they can and can't use. In the case of Peter Dunn, I find it just phenomenal that um, a man of his limited education, which is proving more obvious every time he opens his mouth about cannabis, that he should be in a position to make a decision about what medicine somebody gets. Why did you become a politician? You're wasting people's time and you're wasting people's lives. That's what I mean. How does he sleep at night? I couldn't. There's no consistency between what Peter Dunn says and what Peter Dunn does. Just with the policy change yesterday, he's on the one hand saying doctors should be more open to prescribing cannabis, and yet on the other hand he's still requiring him to get approval from the Ministry of Health. If he genuinely believes that doctors can prescribe cannabis, why doesn't he let them prescribe it? I'm not afraid of laws that don't work. I'm not afraid of the police, and I'm not afraid of government opinion. What I'm afraid of is that not enough people will stand up, be brave enough and strong enough to stand up and stand beside us, because that's what we need. People are getting more and more courage at speaking out, and the more people that speak out, it's a snowball effect. Suddenly, people have got a friend or a neighbor or a relative or a workmate who admits to using medical cannabis, and they're a nice person and they're leading a good life and they've got an effective pain relief, and people are saying, well, why, why is it against the law? The, the more people speak out, the more the government must listen. I feel like we've already won. We're, it's, to me at this point, it's incredibly clear just with the level of public opinion that at some point the politicians are gonna get over themselves and we're going to have a medical cannabis regime. And um, for me, the conversation's really moving on already to how we want that to look and that we really need to fight to make sure that it is a regime that's accessible to everyone, you know, that people can grow their own medicine if they want to, that they can buy it if they want to, um, that they can you know, have large quantities if they need that. Um, some of us want to grow 60 plants and juice one every day. I want to be able to do that. So yeah, we've got to push for maximum freedom as this medical system gets enacted. Our pharmaceutical companies are free to experiment with cannabis if they wish. It would be great if they put their energy into that rather than into all these other poisons they're making. But we can't let that be our only option. It's really important for us to fight for patients' rights so that pharmaceutical cannabis does not become the new medical cannabis reality. I believe that the law will change very soon. The government have got no good reason not to change the law. The public are speaking, the media are covering it intently. The government have got nowhere else to hide. I don't know why they're allowed to get away with saying we need more research. It is the most useless excuse I've heard from the government to keep asking for research when there is thousands of years of research of the safe use of cannabis products. It just defies belief. Clinical trials don't need to be done. They've been done. All over the world. These men know that. Are they making that much money out of alcohol and pharmaceuticals? We come back to corruption and power. These politicians aren't here to look after us, the people. They're here to gain wealth for themselves. Eventually, that has to change. We're just going to keep fighting until I'm growing this in my own backyard, maybe in my own front yard, and, and making that oil out back with my neighbors. That's awesome.